the opener here this week. David and James and I, we start you off by kind of letting you know what is going on around the game. And we are focusing on pitching, obviously. There's some big pitching injuries as we've approached the opening week of the season here. Let's start with the New York Mets, guys. In the offseason, the Mets paired Max Scherzer with Jacob deGrom to form probably the most lethal one-two combo in the big leagues. People were talking about how that stacked up compared to Johnson Schilling some 20 years ago. Scherzer deGrom was going to lead this Mets rotation. But when we're actually going to see them together in the same turn through a rotation is, is to be determined here. DeGrom's hurt again. Stress injury of his right scapula, and he's not going to be thrown for four weeks. So how concerning is the fact that it just kind of seems now over the last 12 months or so, whenever Jacob DeGrom begins to throw a baseball, he's getting hurt, David. Yeah, it is concerning. You know, you keep thinking maybe it would be the elbow again because you're wondering, is, is he eventually going to have to have John? But it wasn't the elbow, so it's it's certainly around the scapula, lat area. So, yeah, that's very recoverable. He'll be back. There's no doubt. So that's the good news. The bad news was is, is, is that there was so much excitement. You know, you mentioned the tandem of Johnson and Schilling, Koufax and Drysdale. DeGrom and Scherzer actually pitched together in a spring training game. It was just those two. You know, DeGrom started, went the first three or four, and then Scherzer came in and finished the game. It was a, probably a, one of the highest-rated television games that the SNY network has had with those two pitchers pitching the fan base is lit up and obviously it's a big blow to the fan base Uh, the diehards are going to cry you know and and understandably so I mean you're so looking forward to watching those guys pitch back to back if you're relying on one pitcher to make or break your team then you probably don't have enough pitching you don't have enough depth so DeGrom will be back Scherzer can hold the fort down until then, assuming that his leg's okay and the hamstring issues are minor, as has has been reported. But that's why you signed Scherzer. You've got two aces. So one of them can hold down the fort. But nonetheless, it's it's, it's very disappointing for the Mets fan base who are so lit up, so excited. New owner, Steve Cohen. They actually have an extra threshold because of your owner, Mets. The Steve Cohen threshold at $290 He doesn't even care about it. So what what a time to be a Mets fan right now. Uh, DeGrom pretty deflating though at this point although he will be back it stinks for baseball he's, he's the best pitcher in the game and and all of us will, will see less of him this year which is disappointing but Coney you mentioned the importance of depth you can't bang that drum enough a note on last season around the major leagues teams averaged just under 14 starting pitchers for the season and they also averaged 42 starts by pitchers who were not in the team's top five and starts so coney you've brought up the six seven eight nine starters they are making up almost a quarter of your entire season in starts that's the wild part about how good jacob degrom is guys because he missed the entire second half of last season he's gonna miss uh, it sounds like at least the first two months of this season but yet when he goes and picks up the baseball again I think we all have that blind faith to say Jacob DeGrom is the best pitcher in baseball. That That's kind of what makes this such a, a sour note because we are not able to see the, the GOAT at the moment in Major League Baseball. I shouldn't say the GOAT, but you know, the, the best pitcher on the planet right now in Jacob DeGrom. All right, let's move on to the White Sox because they've experienced a, an injury or two of their own. Lance Lynn going to be out roughly eight weeks as he makes his way back from a tendon tear in his right knee. And then that means Lucas Giolito is going to assume the top spot in the rotation. But between Lynn going down now, you have a bullpen that had the potential to be excellent. They're now without Craig Kimbrell after he was traded to the Dodgers. They're also without Garrett Crochet, who could hit triple digits. He's going down for Tommy John surgery. Joe Kelly is also starting the season late. So the White Sox also have a lot of pitching injuries. They're a team that many pick to come out of the American League. The Mets are a a team that many pick to maybe come out of the NL East. Both teams look to be postseason squads. In your opinions, which team do you believe is more equipped to battle through their pitching adversity? I think I'll defer to James Smythe on this. You know, I kind of stand by my statement before of 
if you're relying on one pitcher going down, especially in your rotation, then you don't have enough pitching. Uh, although Lance Lynn is a big blow. I mean, he really has established himself as one of the great horses in the game. I mean, three times through the lineup, no problem for him. You know, those type of starting pitchers are rare in today's game. And when, when we're, Hey, he's, he's going to pitch six, seven innings. He's going to average that. You don't have to worry about him or his pitch count. He's so efficient about it with his fastball going after hitters. So, yeah, I mean, James, it, it, it's a big blow, but I think the White Sox in the Central Division, you know, it, it might be an interesting story there. Yeah, it's a big blow either way. These are great pitchers, but I think just the circumstance of where they are in their league and in their division is, could, could swing that. The White Sox are in the AL Central. The Mets are in the NL East. I think the White Sox can, can weather this easier than the Mets can just because even with this, I mean, the, the White Sox are still the odds-on favorite to win the AL Central. And the Mets, they're going to have to deal with uh, a possibly ascendant Phillies team and uh, the Atlanta Braves, who just happen to be the world champs and have our guest Max Freed. So it might be a tougher road to hoe for the Mets. Yeah, I know I've mentioned it in the last couple of weeks. I'm pretty bullish on the AL Central. I think it's going to be a sneaky good division. But I, yeah, the, the NL East is way more pressing right now. So I would have to say the White Sox can, can withstand this. They can weather this storm. In the West, in the National League West, you have the Padres acquiring Sean Manaya. So he's reunited with with his old manager in Oakland, Bob Melvin. And he joins a rotation that you didn't think needed any more depth to it. But here you have Manaya being inserted into rotation with you, Darvish, Blake Snell, Joe Musgrove, and Mike Clevenger. And oh yeah, they have guys like Chris Paddock and Nick Martinez on the outside looking in now. Does this move make San Diego a threat to win the NL West? Well, it, it's, it's sort of a, a, a tough spot in the NL West when you're the San Diego Padres and you've made so much progress over the last few years and you have a great young shortstop, maybe the best young player in the game, even though he's hurt as well, but he will be back at some point after his wrist surgery that you have to keep up with the Dodgers. You have to keep on making moves to try to get deeper and better because you know the Dodgers are a juggernaut right now. They are the team in Major League Baseball that has tremendous resources that will stop at nothing. They're not worried about the third luxury tax or the fourth luxury tax. They're going to do whatever they can to stay on top and, and keep a sustainable model. So if you're in that division and you're the San Diego Padres, I understand this move. It's a move that you got to keep. These are the type of moves you got to keep making, uh, especially when you've got some injuries, you know, that, that you've got to overcome. It does make it interesting that they, that they have been shopping paddock, you know, the, the right-handed kind of fastball changeup guy. Uh, the Mets, uh, there's rumors that he might go to the Mets to kind of help them with their depth. Be interesting to see, you know, uh, if anything happens before opening day with some of this excess pitching or starting pitching that's out there or whether that works itself up to the trade deadline and, and, and maybe maybe something happens at that point. Can I pick the Padres to win the NL Central instead? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe a move that leads to another move. Hey, you have, you have Paddock, you have Nick Martinez who pitched in Korea. Yeah. You have Mackenzie Gore who – is another you know young name that is expected to get a chance here in 2022, and they go after a pitcher in Sean Mania who is as durable as a pitcher could be in in 2021. So it's going to be interesting to watch for in the NL West. 